Chapter 2 goes over a lot of theories and therapies that are used in psychiatric um, nursing mental, and mental health. Most of these theories you've already had. We had last semester. You've had in your Psych 230 class. And you've had probably um, those of you who are in the uh, APO group, you've had these as well. So please just go back over and review these. Um, we will go over a few. I'm going to go over the behavioralist and some of the additional therapies. So that's what I'm going to concentrate on. But the others that you should already know. There's two terms that I want you to become aware of and pay attention to as you're in practice. One is transference and the other is countertransference. Now transference, uh, this can be positive or negative feelings, but it's really um, a patient's feelings towards a healthcare provider that were originally felt for someone who was more significant in their lives. So an example of this would be um, a patient may not like a nurse because she reminds uh, him of his mean aunt, uh, great aunt Gertrude, and so he just has those feelings towards that nurse because they just remind him too much of aunt Gertrude. The second term I want you to become aware of is countertransference, and this is um, unconscious feelings that the healthcare professional has towards the patient. So let's say you're taking care of an alcoholic patient, and they remind you of. Uh, an abusive alcoholic mother that you had. So you have these feelings towards this patient. It's really hard for you to work with them at times because you envision that person. Okay, so we're going to get started and on page, I believe it's twin, yeah, 26. It starts behavioral theories and therapies. Next we have... Um, behavior uh, theories, and um, some of these are your conditioning theories and behavior theories. Um, these are based on changing maladaptive behaviors that a patient has. Uh, it works best when it's directed at a specific problem, and um, you have well-defined goals for those uh, patients. Its implications for nursing is that we're going to either modify or replace behaviors, or um, we use it for behavior management. You're going to want to look up these terms and make sure you have a, an understanding for them so when you see them, you know the background. Um, you know, modeling is done through uh, learning through imitation, where your operant conditioning is behavior modification when voluntary behaviors are increased and you or decreased through positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, or punishment. Um, systematic desensitization. This is the development of behavior tasks um, as they are customized to a uh, patient's specific um, fears. So the patient is gradually exposed while using relaxation techniques. Um, aversion therapy is more drastic. Um, they use noxious uh, stimulants, punishment, or um, expose, um, um, you know, expose them um, um, to something and uh, they might even use just complete avoidance to be, um, to keep from being exposed. So um, the needs are ongoing. Supervision, support, and evaluation is used. System, uh, systemic desensitization would be, um, uh, I have a fear of flying. So um, every time I go on a trip, someone has me go on a plane to eventually desensitize me. Or if uh, putting me in an elevator, I'm claustrophobic as well, so I don't, you know, I don't like being in closed areas, but everywhere we went, I would be in an elevator, and um, and they would add more and more people to that elevator to where I'm more closed in, and um, so that would be a, a type of system uh, systemic desensitization. Biofeedback. Um, this is a technique um, that's used for gaining control over unconscious body functions, such as the blood pressure or maybe a heartbeat. Individuals can learn to monitor and control responses by the use of sensitive instruments that can uh, provide information on body functioning. Such as someone talks to themselves out, they feel an anxiety or panic attack coming on, and they can 
actually use techniques to talk themselves down or help them to relax. Now, cognitive theory, these, these are thoughts that come before feelings and actions. So the thoughts about the world and our place in it are based on our, uh, just our own unique um, perspectives, uh, which may or may not be based on reality. Um, so it can be something that someone dreams up or thinks of, and it's in their mind. Um, cognitive distortion, those are thoughts that are absolutely irrational, and they lead to false assumptions and misinterpretations. With cognitive theories, there's two. There's rational and emotive uh, behavior therapy by Ellis and cognitive behavioral therapy by Back. And with the rational and emo uh, motive uh, behavior, this aims to eradicate any irrational beliefs and recognizes that thoughts, um, that their thoughts are not accurate. So this believes that the perception influences all their thoughts, which in turn influences our behaviors. Uh, an example could be uh, feeling that the glass is half empty or people who feel like the glass is half full. It's their perceptions and how they believe um, uh, and it influences their thoughts and their lifestyle uh, depending on what type of person this, uh, you are. Are you a glass half empty person or are you a glass half full? Your cognitive behavior therapy by Beck um, it tests distorted beliefs and it tries to change the way of thinking. So they want to reduce symptoms. Um, they looked at um, depression They were uh, and trying to relieve the symptoms of depression. It's based on the principle that feelings and behaviors are largely determined by the way people think about the world and their place in it. And their cognition is based on attitudes or assumption, uh, assumptions um, that is develop that um, develops it. Um, so through their developmental forms, attitudes and uh, assumptions and their ways of thinking, is it nature or is it nurture? Is it something that's within them or is it their environment? Maybe their household uh, and their surroundings were um, were um, very negative or maybe very positive. And remember Maslow's hierarchy and needs and saying that humans are you know, striving to be participants in life and striving for self-actualization. And remember that was at the very tip top of the triangle. And so we have to work our way up. So the most important thing right now is meeting our, our needs. And those are the, um, when those are meet, that met, then we move on to the next level. So the emphasis is on human potential and our patient's strengths. Prioritizing nursing actions and the patient nurse patient relationship. And your physiological takes top priority, even though it's the top priority, it's not the top of the um, triangle, it's actually at the bottom because these are the major ones that we need to meet first. Uh, page 31 through 33 actually reviews uh, the model uh, when you go through and look at the hierarchy of needs, and uh, you actually have the figure on page 32. And then the implications um, for nursing is on page 33. When we look at the biological um, theories, it's how the body and the brain are going to interact to create emotions, memories, and perceptual experiences. Um, this perception views abnormal behavior as a part of a disease process or a defect and seeks to stop or alter it. A target site is located and treated with drugs, diet, or surgery. Um, a person cannot be responsible for their illness just as someone is, you know, um, going to be responsible for heart disease and diabetes. So again, this is part of your um, biological theories. So how do we use it in nurses? On uh, nursing, we focus on the qualities of a therapeutic relationship understanding our patient's perspective, and communicating to facilitate their recovery. An additional therapy you're going to see and you're going to hear throughout this uh, textbook is Malo therapy. And it is the total environment. Uh, so I want you to pay attention when you go to uh, any mental health uh, facilities. Um, it's 
actually how the place is set up. Colors, lighting, um, furniture, where people are, um, can really make a difference. Um, the environment provides opportunities for growth and healing. It's going to include people such as the staff and the patients. And it takes naturally occurring events and events in the environment and uses them as learning opportunities. Um, you have safe houses for abused um, um, pay, uh, individuals. You have safe environments for those with Alzheimer's or your suicidal patients would be some of the examples.